Okay, so this part of the organization tour is all about how to organize our quilting rulers. Uh, if you're anything like me, I have accumulated a lot of quilting rulers over my 20 years of quilting. There's always seems to be the newest, the latest, the greatest, the best. Um, for a while, I would buy, buy the ruler thinking I would use it until I found a brand I liked and what I wanted in a ruler. And then I started to really kind of streamline the rulers that I like. Uh, for storage, they are acrylic rulers. They ha you have to be careful because you can break off your corners or crack it. So you can't put a lot of uneven weight on top because over time it can crack your rulers. Um, so storing them either vertically in a quilting rack like these guys, which is just basically uh, a nice piece of wood with a slot strip uh, cut into it. Uh, you could, they always have, well, I guess, yes, they always have holes in them. You could have a cork board or a pegboard and you can hang these on a pegboard if you don't have a lot of them. I outgrew a pegboard many years ago. Um, or you can store them flat in a flat drawer. You just want to make sure that they're not, there's not a lot of weight on top of them that can crack them if it's uneven. Uh, so that being said, let's get started with how I do my rollers. Uh, first is this rack that sits at the end of my cutting table. If you watched the video on our studio tour, you saw it. Um, this rack has all of my square rulers in it. It has all my rectangles, my eight and a half by 24, my eight and a half by 18. Um, it has my Creative Grid Circle Savvy ruler in here. I use this to cut circles and curves. That's in some of our other videos. Uh, our Cat's Cradle ruler, which is also another ruler that um, I did a video on. I love using this. We have the lar extra large and small. And then you'll see in a lot of our quilting tutorials, our Pac-Man ruler, which is the Creative Grid's uh, non-slip, multi-size, six inch flying geese and 45 slash 90 degree triangle ruler. I need a shorter name. A student of mine on a cruise called it the Pac-Man ruler and that's what we call it now in the studio. Um, so in this rack is just the rulers I use all the time. There's the two peaks and one ruler you'll see a lot of. Um, and that's all I keep in this ruler, in this rack. Um, you'll notice I have 90% creative grid rulers here. That's because over time I have learned that that is my ruler of choice. I love the uh, little, I think it's sandblasted, the little textured dots on the back that keep the ruler from sliding. You don't have to treat your ruler with anything or put a film on it. It just doesn't slide. Uh, when you push down, when you, when you don't push down, it moves around. And then when you push down, it doesn't want to move. So after many years, I discovered this was my ruler of choice. So what I did at that point is I went through my rulers, just like anything else in the studio. Once a year, I kind of go through everything and I get rid of things that I know I'm not going to use. I donate them to friends or donate them to charity. They'll get much more use that way. So I have um, only kept the rulers I'm going to really use. So those are my go-to. I need them at the end of my cutting table and I use them all the time. Uh, the other ruler I have in here, if you haven't tried this ruler, this is the Stripology ruler. Um, there, this is the Stripology Extra Large. If you have to cut a lot of strips, this ruler is awesome. I'll have to do a video just on this ruler later. But um, I keep that one in here as well. So these are those. And then in this ruler rack, which sits over on our windowsill, are my rulers that I will use periodically. Like here's our wavy edge ruler. Excuse me. Here is our wavy edge ruler that I use, my setting triangle ruler. Um, this is the 120 degree ruler. So these are like a few more of the funkier rulers that I use periodically, but not all the time. And that's why they're not on the cutting table, but they're over by the window. Um, then I have my small rulers. And that I keep in this lovely box from Quilted Koala. And in here are all the smaller rulers. But what I do, so that I don't have a whole box of acrylic rulers and I have to sort through the entire box to find what I want, is I put them in groups in Ziploc bags and I put them in the box. So in this bag, I know these are all of my log cabin rulers. The eight inch curvy log cabin, the eight inch regular log cabin, the four inch miniature ones, anything log cabins are in this bag. These are all my hexagons. I have all of my, I have some loose ones in here that don't fit in a category. The 
then I have all of my half square triangle rollers. And the thing about this is like I have six or seven flip and sew or folded corner trimmers. If I'm teaching a class, I can pull all of these out and have some in my classroom so that my students have them even if they don't purchase the ruler because I don't really want to make you buy a ruler. Um, I will recommend it, but I won't make you buy a ruler. Um, so that's how I store all the little rulers that I use a lot. I put them in Ziploc bags into this box. And then I also just keep a Ziploc bag because Creative Grid rulers all come with amazing little instruction booklets that tell you how to use the di each ruler. Um, and they, now, they always get separated, so I put them in a baggie and I know they're all in this box. Um, that being said, on a tangent, if you do have Creative Grids rulers and you do lose your instructions, they are all online at their website. You can just go into the website, put in the name of your ruler, which is printed on the front of it, and it will tell you here are the instructions and you can download them and have them again. So this sits on the other side of my cutting table, again, because I do need to get access to it but I don't need it out. We get too many things out. And so then the last thing is um, the ruler sets that I don't use all the time. These get stored in a flat drawer under my ironing board. And I have these also in bags by category. These are all Mariner Compass rulers. These are all specialty rulers like um, Double Wedding Ring and Pickle Dish. And so these are rulers that are specific quilt blocks. And then these are all of my obscure triangle rulers. If I ever need a degree ruler, I have a 45 degree, I have a 60 degree, I have a, what is this one, 20 degree, no, 10 degree ruler. I have every degree ruler I could need. They're all in this bag. This is my obscure triangle bag. So that is how I store my rulers. I hope that this helps some of you. Um, I, have, I hope somebody has the same kind of ruler issue I have, and I'm not the only ruler junkie out there that has to have multiple ways of storing my rulers. Um, but any which way you store them, you want to make sure, one, they are protected from being broken. Two, that you have easy access to the ones you need. Um, and three, like I said, I would go through my rulers once a year, consider rulers you never use, and pass them on to a, a charity, a guild, um, somebody else will love that ruler. They can be very expensive, so if you're not going to use it, share it, send it on. And I hope that this helps you with your rulers. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, make sure you like and su subscribe below. You can find The Whimsical Workshop on our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com, and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us.